Um, I've been doing these for my year eights, um, doing their game development course. And uh, I think, well, they've been quite fun for me to do. Uh, hopefully they'll be useful to the students as well. Um, so I'm not going as fast as I would normally do because this is the first one. I'm just going to explain a little bit about what I'm going to do. So I'm going to set a timer uh, for 10 minutes. Um, okay. And, um, and then I'm basically going to do as many of the Python replic tasks as I can. I mean, obviously, I know a little bit of Python. I might have to look up some stuff. Um, so this is not realistic to compare this to how long it would take you to do the task or whatever. But I just thought it might be uh, interesting, it might be useful, um, and it might be a little bit of fun. So uh, I'm going to do it and see how I do. Uh, if it's useful to you, then I'll keep doing them. If not, I won't. But um, anyway, let's go. Let's do Python Replit speed run with me, Mr. Dunk. So 10 minutes started now. Um, Hopefully you've all done the first one, but uh, I've reset my reset all my tasks so I can do them all with you um, as I go. Uh, this should be a pretty easy one. Um, where am I going to put my stuff? So input three numbers and add them up and print them out. Well, this is pretty obviously inputting. Well, I don't know. I could run it. I could input a number, input another number, and it adds them up and puts them out. So I reckon this is going to be pretty straightforward. I just need to copy and paste that line. I need to rename the variable. Can't have two variables with the same name. You can never have two variables with the same name in any programming language uh, up to a point. So 12 plus 1011 plus 45 is that. I trust that's right. I'm going to submit it. It's all going to turn green. I'll go next. Uh, back to classroom. Uh, next. Um, this says calculate the area of a triangle. Ah, oh, boo, that was a little bit cheating. So I've got to re re <laughs> So I've got B. Okay, I don't want B. I want the, it's going to input, input, well, it doesn't really matter. The, it's going to input the height and it's going to input the base. And it's going to be a half base times height if you know your geometry. So base, height, print off, um, base times height. Right about two. And Bob's your uncle, Francesca's your uncle's mistress. Let's have a look at the example. It's three five and it should be seven point five and it does. I'm just gonna do one more. Uh thirty five and six six. And that gives me one thousand eight hundred fifty. I hope that's right. Click submit. Boom boom boom. Then he say way okay. Okay, um go back. When you actually watch these videos, I think you can turn the speed up to like times two. And you can still understand what I'm saying. Uh, so print someone's name. Okay, so this is a little bit different. Uh, we have been inputting integer numbers to start with, but now we're going to input a string. Okay, so strings are interesting. Strings are pieces of text, and we can write string literals by putting things in speech marks. Okay, everything we, everything that we need needs to go in the speech mark. And if you look at this, there's the word hello, there's a comma, and there's actually a space. So I need to put the space inside my speech mark if I want it to work. And do my speech mark with my da da da. Okay, when I run that, I get to type in my name. My name actually is Harry, spelled slightly differently. I can submit that. There we go. Bob's your uncle. Francesca's your uncle's mistress. Da da. Here we go. Complete, complete, complete. What is this one? I mean, I've done some of these as well, so I'm cheating. Like, this is a, it's not fair because I, I kind of read some of these. Ah, look at this. Oh, God, I've got to reset my workspace. Gosh darn it. Okay, so uh, I want to output this. I'm going to input a number, and I'm going to show the number, and then I'm going to show the next number, and I'm going to show the previous number. So I need the number. That's going to work. Um, I need some string literals again. You know what? I'm cheating, so I'm going to do copy and paste. Ooh, look at that. Boom. So the next number for the number A. Don't forget your pluses because we're sticking these two strings together. This is, remember I need my spaces, so space is space plus, and then because A is an integer, I need to change my integer to a string to be able to stick it to the other thing. So I'm going to string this bad boy, and the next one is A plus 1. If A is 179, then A plus 1 
must be 100 and something. I don't know. There we go. Uh, the next number for 100. Yeah, you were awesome. So I'm just going to copy that. It's the uh, previous. I can't spell the word previous, so I'm going to paste it in there. And previous is before, so I have to minus one, run that. 179, boom. The next number is 100. Oh, previous is boom. Okay, there we go, submit. Yeah, as I said, um, I've watched some of these videos back to myself and I realized that I talk quite slowly and I click quite slowly and everything happens quite slowly. Oh, Lisa, Lisa, oh, oof, okay, well, what's this? What's, what's going on here? Okay, and students take K apples. Examples of division into the division and remainder. Well, what the hell is that? Okay, uh, reset my workspace. Uh, run that. Okay, so 63 divided by 5 is 12.6. Yes, it is. 63 divided by 5 is 12. 63 divided by 5 is 3. Well, kind of, technically, in a way. Uh, so this is um, floating point division. Gives you the decimal. This is whole number, number division. It only gives you the whole number part. And last one is modulo, which only gives you the remainder. Now, this looks like I might need to use it. So if I've got six people and I've got 50 apples, then each person gets eight apples and I have two apples left over. That seems pretty easy. So, uh, so students, uh, apples, uh, you'll know I'm always changing the variable names to something that makes sense to the problem. Okay, when you're coding, right, code can get a little bit um, confusing. So I need to do apples by students, right? Not students by apples, but I want to know how many students I've got per apple. I want to know how many apples I've got per student. So I'm going to do that. Ah, don't go too fast. Uh, what is it? Uh, six students, fifty apples. Oh, student. Oh gosh, darn it. There we go. Be careful when you're speed running stuff. Okay, six students, fifty apples. That should be eight. Yeah, it is. Okay, so I'm going to submit that. Back to my classroom. Uh, what is my next one? Next one, next one, next one. Oh, input hours. Oh, I'm going to have to read the actual question this time. Given an N number of seconds, oh, go away, Zoom announcements. That's Zoom, by the way. That's not my Steam. You notice I haven't got Steam open. Uh, given N number of seconds since midnight, how many full hours, full minutes are passed since midnight? The program should print two numbers the number of hours and the number of minutes between da 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 da. -da. For example, if you've had 3,900 seconds since midnight, it's now 1.05 a.m. So this should be one hour and 60, so one full hour and 65 full minutes. Okay, so this is seconds since, this is, this, I'm gonna have to think about this one. Seconds since midnight, uh, hours since midnight. Ah, okay, so I need to print hours, minutes. Okay, so uh, so hours is going to equal hours is going to equal seconds, uh, whole number division divided by sixty times sixty, right? Yeah, because there's sixty minutes and sixty mi uh, seconds in a minute, sixty minutes in an hour. So that should give me hours. Uh, then I need to. Uh, I'm going to have to take that away, right? Because I've already accounted for that many hours. So I'm going to have to do that. Minus. Uh, minus that. Really? Times that. Is that right? I can do it. So hours times that. I'm just going to use bracket. I don't know if this is right. So I've got my whole hours, I think. I then need to take those whole hours away from my seconds. And then I need to get the minutes from those. So minutes is going to equal the new seconds. Or uh, again, whole number division divided by 60, because that's 60 seconds in a minute. Is there? Who knows? I don't know. I'm going to run it. <sighs> So 3,900, so 3,900 
should give me one hour sixty five. Booyakasha! Oh yeah. Okay, now I'm going to waste some time by checking. Oh god, there's only fifty five seconds left. I'm not going to have time to do another one. Oh, 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 what's this? Oh, given two timestamps. Okay, I'm going to try it. Uh, so hours. Oh, one. N1. Oh, do you know what? Uh, H1. M1. S1. Uh, H2. M2. S2. It's going to equal the timestamp. Oh, so hours. Oh, no. I'm not going to do it. Minutes. Seconds. Damn it. Waste of time. What a loser. Come on, come on, come on. Okay, so, uh, oh, God, what a horrible sound. Okay, I'm going to turn that off. Uh, uh, I am going to finish this one task. So there's two timestamps. A timestamp is the hours, minutes, and seconds. Hours, minutes, and seconds, and we need to find the difference. So I'm going to say diff is going to equal to, um, what is it? Uh, I'm going to put these in both. So H1 is hours, so we need to times hours by 60 and then by 60 to get seconds. And then we need to add minutes. So I'm going to do minutes times 60 to get seconds, then plus the seconds. Okay, that should give me the first timestamp in seconds. Yeah, the reason I'm doing that is because I need to output the difference in seconds. Uh, Okay, boom, put all of that, so, and then I'm going to do, got to do the second time minus the third time, right? So H2 times 60 times 60, that will give me the second, plus uh, minutes, minutes 2 times 60 to give me the second, and then plus second 2. Okay, so if I... Uh, I think they've got the right amount of brackets there. So this will give me the second time in seconds. This will give me the first time in seconds. So if I take the first and the second, I should get a difference. And I can then print that. I could just print the whole thing in one go, but I thought I'd show you one at a time. Ooh, unmatched. Unmatched. Okay, there we go. Yeah, we need a bracket there and a bracket there, I believe. Hmm. Hmm. Let's try that. Oh, still got brackets. Bracket problems. Bracket problems. Open, open, closed, open. So I should have two open, two closed. Open, open, closed. I should have one open. Open should have two open, closed. I should have one open. Ah, extra bracket on the end. Uh, run that. What was it? Uh, one, oh, one, one, two, 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 three, six, six, one, booyah! Okay, so cheated a little bit. I went slightly over time, but I did have an introduction at the beginning. Uh, turns out in 10 minutes, Mr. Denton, with his um, vague but slightly crappy knowledge of Python, can do... What was that? Seven, seven tasks. Awesome. All right, anyway. Um, I hope that was useful. I hope it's interesting. Uh, as I said, you can watch it at two times speed and still understand what I'm saying. Um, if you're struggling with a particular problem, you can watch that one and just pause it and listen to me and watch what I'm doing when it gets to the problem that you're stuck on. All right. Hopefully that'll be useful. Let me know. Cheers. Bye.